Good morning, brothers and sisters. I hope you all had a, a Merry Christmas and that you were able to spend some good quality time with your families. Today is December 27th, 2020, and this is the last Sunday of 2020. Thank God, right? I mean, this has been an extraordinarily difficult year. I mean, we've had uh, record-breaking wildfires. And then remember all that, that social and racial unrest that we had? Not to mention all of the political division. And of course, looming over everything was COVID-19. And we've also had the loss of loved ones. And I don't know about all of you, but after this crazy year, I'm tired. I'm exhausted. I'm, I'm weary. Have you been feeling this way too? Are you weary? You know, like many of you, I've been, you know, hearing Christmas music on the radio and, uh, I was listening and one of the lyrics really struck me. Um, it's from my favorite Christmas carol of, of all time, right? Oh, Holy Night. And there's a verse that really captures uh, how I'm feeling. And I, I think, I suspect how you are feeling as well. And, and it goes like this, it goes, a thrill of hope, the weary world rejoices. For yonder breaks a new and glorious morn. And I think this speaks of our hope in Christ, right, which is good, which is exciting, which is uh, exhilarating. It thrills us. Right? But it also acknowledges our world weariness. You know, just our weariness over everything that's just going on in the world. Brothers and sisters, are you feeling weary? If so, today I'd like to encourage us from the word. Um, our, our scripture today comes from Galatians chapter 6, verses 9 to 10. And hopefully this will be an encouragement for us not to grow weary. I know we are all tired. Some of us feel maybe hopeless. I know. The Lord knows. And he encourages us. God encourages us to persist, to persevere. He says, don't give up. Right? Hope is coming. It's going to be okay. All right. Okay, so, so let's take a look at these two verses together. Galatians chapter 6, verses 9 and 10. All right, let's read. And let us not grow weary of doing good, for in due season we will reap if we do not give up. So then, as we have opportunity, let us do good to everyone, and especially to those who are of the household of faith. Okay, would you please join me in prayer? Okay, let's pray together. Heavenly Father, you know that this has been an extraordinary year. God, it's been tiring, fatiguing. It's been wearing us down physically and spiritually and emotionally. God, we are tired, we are exhausted, we are weary after 2020. But Lord, encourage us, lift us up, help us to, to find the strength to carry on, to, to persevere, Lord, to keep doing the right thing, to keep doing good. Lord, lift us up, encourage us by your word. This morning, we thank you. We pray this in Jesus' name, amen. All right, well, our passage today, um, it comes from the last chapter of Paul's letter to the Galatians. 
right? And, th and this entire book has been talking about exalting faith over works, all right? Faith over works. And Paul's been hammering this in over and over throughout this entire letter. We, you, we cannot earn our salvation. We cannot add anything to the work of Christ, okay? But that does not mean we just believe and do nothing, okay? We cannot just believe and do nothing. On the contrary, Paul has a lot to say about how the gospel is supposed to impact our lives, how it's supposed to transform us. Right? He says we are to, to walk in the spirit and, and, and manifest his fruit, right? the, the fruit of the spirit, love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. Right? We are to, to manifest these virtues, these characteristics. We are to look different than the world, okay? True faith produces these works, this manifestation of the Spirit. And so following Christ is countercultural, and it's also a commitment, okay? It is countercultural and a commitment. And so when Paul says this, when he says, and let us not grow weary of doing good he's saying he's talking about practical tangible things he's talking about things that the gospel uh, uh, makes us uh, do okay in the real world okay and and uh, it'll just give you a bit of a reminder as believers we must um, like I said manifest or, or show the spirit in our character, okay, Galatians 5, 22, 23, the, the fruit of the Spirit. Okay. Um, we are also to obey Jesus' teachings, especially as he, he has laid out the ethics of the kingdom in his Sermon at the Mount, uh, Matthew chapter 5, right? And so these are some of the things, these are some of the good that Christians, that we believers, we must do. Right? These are the, the demands of discipleship. Okay, The demands of discipleship. Some of these things right here. Um, generally speaking, we must manifest the Spirit. We must walk in the Spirit. And we must obey everything that Jesus has taught us. All right. But um, in, in, in verse 9, Paul's also speaking referring to some specific good works okay which he had just talked about um in the verses prior right we're, we're entering our passage at verse nine uh before this he he already spoke about some of the good things that believers must do okay um if you have your bible open uh, you may find it helpful to read for yourself the beginning of galatians chapter six he gives us these examples of some of this good works that we are to do. And I'll just summarize here as well. Um, Galatians chapter 6 verse 1, he says, you know, we are to restore those who are entrapped in sin. What we are supposed to kind of bring them back into the fold gently, carefully, right? restoring them. All right, uh, in, in Galatians chapter 6, verse 2, he also says we are to bear one another's burdens. Right? We are to care for one another and, and, and help one another. If someone is needy, we are supposed to help them. Okay. And then also in, um, in verse 6, Galatians 6, 6, he does say, you know, we are to share materially with those who teach the Bible, who teach the gospel, right? We support those who have this full-time calling of teaching the gospel all right and so um and so he he goes through all these these good things uh good works and then he just sums it all up in verse 9 and let us not grow weary of doing good all right i mean paul knows that this is difficult 
it's, it's difficult. It's tiresome. It's weary. It, it wearies us. Um, it is, it's really hard to swim against the culture, right? Jesus' teachings were very countercultural. They were very revolutionary for their time. Right? And when we manifest the spirit, when we walk in the spirit and not as the world does, right, that's tiresome. Right? And so um, Paul says, I know it's hard, but don't give up. You don't grow weary of doing things. Right? Don't grow weary of, of caring for others. Right? I know you have your own stuff to deal with, but do not grow weary. It is easy to grow weary. I mean, this is all just extra credit, right? This is all just extra credit. You know, I, I'm a believer. I'm in the door. I'm, I'm going to heaven. This is all just extra credit, right? You know what? That, if that's the case, then I'll just settle for a passing grade. I'm just too tired. Uh, you don't know what I have to deal with every day. I'm just too tired to, to do this. But Paul encourages us. He encourages us. He doesn't force us or threaten us or guilt us. He encourages us. Right? Keep on going. Let us not grow weary. Keep going. Brothers and sisters, beloved, keep going. All right, and he continues in verse 9. For in due season we will reap if we do not give up. Paul says we have to keep going. We have to keep doing good because of our faith. It's because of our faith. It is because of our shared hope in the future that our, our hard work, our toiling, our striving is not in vain. When we, when we do good in the faith, we are sowing good seeds. And Paul says, in due season we will reap. In due season we will reap. Uh, God will bring our labors to fruition. We will, we will see the harvest of all that we have done, all of our hard work, our blood, sweat, and tears and, and, and toil, we will be able to see this, this harvest. He will bring the growth. God will bring the growth. All right. But in the meantime, we must not give up. We must sow. We must tend. We must cultivate. Right. Trusting that in due season, we will reap. You know, this reminds me of that, uh, the Chinese idiom. Uh, you may have heard it before. Ba miao zu zhang. Okay. Ba miao zu zhang. And this, this is a saying, it comes from the story of, of, a, of a Chinese farmer who, who planted his, his rice seed out in his, in his field. And, and a couple days later, they, they sprouted. Right? They sprouted tiny little sprouts. All right. And this farmer, he was overjoyed. And a couple days later, the farmer started to get worried. Right? The, the sprouts hadn't grown very much. And then a couple more days went by, and, and still the, the sprouts barely grew. They didn't seem to be growing. And so the farmer, he's scratching his head, ooh, what to do, what to do? And so he goes out into his rice paddy Right into his rice field, and one by one, he starts pulling up on the shoots, right? trying to speed this process along. And he thinks, "Well, I'm just helping them grow." And of course, you know how the story ends, right? The uh, the, the the rice they all died, right? The rice uh, field is is gone. And the moral of the story: patience is a virtue, right? Patience is a virtue. Good things don't grow overnight. Right? Good things don't grow overnight. And as it is with ministry, with our prayers, 
with any labor of love, we must wait on God's timing. We cannot rush his timing, right? Paul says, in due season, we will reap. Not in our time, not in our timing, when we want it. In due season, we will reap. So, he says, do not grow weary. All right. Keep on sowing. Keep on laboring. Keep on loving. Okay. All right. Verse 10. So then, as we have opportunity, let us do good to everyone. Paul continues his encouragement, his exhortation. And he says, you know, any time we have an opportunity, any moment that God gives you to anyone and everyone, all right, let us do good. Let us do good. As we go and, and live our daily lives, we go about our business, we go to school, we go to work, God will give us opportunities. These are opportunities to witness, to, to work diligently, to speak truthfully, to, to spend wisely, to give generously, right? to act gracefully. You know, our, our daily lives are filled with God-given opportunities to do good. God-given opportunities to do good. You know, you, you may have seen this um, before at your local grocery market, your local grocery store. You may have seen it and walked on by. Uh, this, of course, is the, the Salvation Army Shield. Uh, this is their logo. They have this picture, you know, on their collection boxes, their goods collection boxes. And, you know, I, I think that this is a really, really brilliant reminder, you know, that, that it's not just about stuff. It's not just about getting rid of your unwanted items. It's about being given this opportunity to do some good. You know, to, to share God's love, to, to let someone else that you don't even know, let them know that, that you care about them. All right? Do not grow weary of caring for those who don't care for you. Like Paul says, let us do good. All right, I, I also find it pretty interesting that Paul has to specify, you know, let us do good to everyone everyone yes that includes your neighbors your co-workers your relatives your friends even those people that you don't know everyone and doing good to everyone includes uh, loving your neighbor as yourself right the great commandment love your neighbor um you know in in our in our current uh, situation here one of the most the easiest most practical ways that we can love our neighbors is to simply wear wear a mask right right now wear a mask social distance right encourage responsible behavior right? be a good citizen but that's not all we're doing we are also being good neighbors godly witnesses and wearing this is not just about protecting yourself right? it's also about protecting others right? by wearing this you are saying you know I, I care enough about you even you if I, even I don't know you but I care enough about you to protect you even from myself right? even from myself I don't know you, but I care enough about you to protect you, even from myself. And so, brothers and sisters, 
do not grow weary of wearing your mask, of being a good neighbor. It's practical. It's easy. It says a lot about who we are. All right. And Jesus also taught us to, to love your enemy. Right? Love your enemy. Pray for those who persecute you. Um, this, this, this means we don't treat the world in a worldly way. You know, we are called to, to show them Christ. We don't hate those who hate us. We are to love them as Christ did. If we were only to treat well those who treat us well, well, that would be pretty self-serving, wouldn't it? But God calls us to a, a higher way, a, a narrower path. You know, we are, we are called to, to live out the, the divine life, okay? The divine life. We are to go the extra mile, to turn the other cheek. We are to forgive as we have been forgiven. So, brothers and sisters, do not grow weary of doing good to everyone, neighbors and enemies alike. All right, let's finish up. Galatians 10b. Let us do good to everyone and especially to those who are of the household of faith. All right, uh, uh, especially, you know, that, that assumes that we are to love believers and non-believers, right? if, if it's especially. But Paul does say that, especially believers right, of the household of faith. We are family. We are family. If we don't take care of our own family, then who are we? What are we doing? What kind of message does that send to the, the world who is watching us? If we neglect our own brothers and sisters in need, if we don't even care for our own, how can we care for them? Right. We must care for believers and non-believers. You know, God has given us the church to love, to support, to serve. The household of faith, the church. We are also to love the church, the church with a capital C. All right. The, the, we're talking about the, the universal church, the universal body of believers, all those who have received Christ and have been baptized into the one faith. We are to love the church with a capital C. We are to support the church's global mission to make disciples of all nations. That is the church's mission, all right? And we are to love the church and, and, and support the mission, the goal and the glory of God. But we are also called to, to love your church. You are to love your church with the little c. I'm talking about the local body of believers that you've been called to, that I've been called to. Evangelical Chinese Church of South King County. We belong to this body, this church with the little c. We are to love our church. And yes, this includes giving, but it means so much more than that. It also means encouraging your brothers and sisters in Christ, your fellow church members. Look in your church directory. Right? Those are your, your church members. I pray for them. Supporting your church also means teaching in Sunday school, you know, serving on various boards and committees, making decisions that matter. Um, serving your, loving your church also means um, building maintenance, changing uh, dead light bulbs, taking out the trash, 
preparing food for our fellowships, serving on the AV team, putting together PowerPoints and bulletins, you know, all the little things that keep a church going requires love. And even in the midst of a pandemic, there are tons of things that need to be done right, to keep this church going, even in the midst of a pandemic. And so before we, we get these, these grand plans to go and change the world and reach the lost, let us be faithful to our own local church. Brothers and sisters, there is no shortage of opportunities to do good here at our church. There is no shortage of opportunities. There is only a lack of motivation. There is no shortage of opportunities to do good. There is only a lack of motivation. But, brothers and sisters, I get it. I do. We are weary. We're tired. I mean, we're just trying to stay sane and survive our own lives right now. I mean, do good to everyone? Are you kidding me? I can barely just stay afloat. Do good to everyone? I mean, that seems like a luxury. That seems like a luxury that I can't afford right now. Do good to everyone? I get it. We're tired. We're weary. But I promise you this. The more you live selfish, selflessly, the more you give graciously, the more you care about others over yourself, the less anxious, the less weary, the less burdened you will feel. It's, it's paradoxical, but that's, that's the way of the cross. Right. So brothers and sisters, as the Apostle Paul has taught us, let us not grow weary of doing good. Be a good neighbor. Love one another. Support your church. Let us not grow weary of doing good. Okay? So here's to a more free, a more fearless, a more faith-filled 2021. Okay. God bless you all. Happy New Year. Do not grow weary. Okay. Bye now.